Tetracyclines are characterized by the four-membered ring shown here. As an example, this is the structure of doxycycline. Other tetracyclines that are available clinically in the U.S. include minocycline, tetracycline itself, and demiclocycline. Glycocyclines have a similar structure as the tetracyclines, and these alterations give the glycocyclines a broader spectrum and activity in tetracycline-resistant strains. There is only one glycocycline available for use, and its name is tigacycline. Proteins are essential for all cells to function and survive. Ribosomes play an essential role in the translation of mRNA into proteins. Bacterial ribosomes are different than human ribosomes, as bacterial and human ribosomes contain different ribosomal subunits. Protein synthesis inhibitors take advantage of this difference. Bacterial ribosomes are made up of a 70S particle consisting of a 50S large and 30S small subunit. Specifically, tetracyclines and glycocyclines bind the 30S ribosomal subunit and prevent amino acyl tRNA from entering the acceptor A site on the bacterial ribosome. This in turn inhibits protein synthesis by indirectly blocking polypeptide elongation. Tetracyclines and glycocyclines are bacteriostatic. Resistance to tetracyclines and glycocyclines is often inducible and is usually due to one of three possible mechanisms. The first mechanism of resistance deals with reduced intracellular concentration of the antibiotic. This can be mediated by two different pathways. The influx of tetracyclines or glycocyclines can be reduced or an energy-dependent efflux pathway may develop. Interestingly, the glycocyclines possess a glycolamido moiety that reduces their affinity for tetracycline energy-dependent efflux transporters. Because of this, glycocyclines are able to overcome tetracycline resistance mediated by active tetracycline efflux. The ability of the glycocyclines to overcome drug efflux is limited, as glycocyclines are still effluxed by the pumps found in Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Proteus species. The second mechanism of resistance involves the upregulation of a protein that dislodges tetracyclines or glycocyclines from their target. Again, glycocyclines are able to overcome this mechanism of resistance due to their higher binding affinity for the ribosome. Lastly, both tetracyclines and glycocyclines can be inactivated enzymatically, rendering them inactive. Tetracyclines are broad-spectrum bacteriostatic antibiotics. Tetracyclines are more active against gram-positive versus gram-negative bacteria, yet they retain activity in some gram-negative species. In general, tetracyclines are active against anaerobes, chlamydiae, mycoplasms, and rickettsiae. Here are some highlights of some of the many microorganisms that are susceptible to tetracyclines. Tetracyclines are active against methicillin-resistant S. aurelius, or MRSA, Streptococcus pyogenes, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Bacillus anthracis, Listeria monocytogenes, Haemophilus influenzae, Vibrio cholera, and Helicobacter pylori. Tetracyclines are also active against some bacteria that are resistant to cell wall synthesis inhibitors. These include Urea plasma species, Coxiella burnetti, Mycoplasm pneumoniae, Rickettsia species, Chlamydia species, Legionella species, and Plasmodium species. Finally, tetracyclines are active against some spirochetes, including T. pallidum. Tetracyclines are inactive against penicillin-resistant S. pneumoniae, and many Enterobacteriaceae have required resistance. In addition, tetracyclines are inactive against Pseudomonas, Proteus, and Providencia species. Glycocyclines, and mainly Tigacycline, have the same activity as tetracyclines with some added activity against those bacteria that have developed resistance to tetracyclines. Tigacycline has much greater activity against Enterococci, Enterobacteriaceae, Acinetobacter species, and B. fragilis. Pseudomonas proteus and Providencia species are still resistant to tigacycline. The adverse effects for the tetracyclines and glycocyclines include GI irritation and effects on bone structures and teeth. GI irritation includes diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, and these are the most common reasons for patients to discontinue tetracyclines or glycocyclines. Many of the tetracyclines are incompletely absorbed from the GI tract, and the unabsorbed fraction can alter the intestinal microbiome. This can place the patient at risk to develop C. difficile associated colitis. Tetracyclines bind quite well to the calcium of newly developing bones and teeth. 
children treated with tetracyclines or glycocyclines have the potential to develop a permanent brown discoloration of the teeth. Furthermore, tetracyclines and glycocyclines are avoided in pregnant women due to the effects the drugs can have on the newly formed fetal bones and teeth. Deformity or growth inhibition can occur in fetal bone growth, and discoloration and enamel dysplasia can occur with the fetal teeth. This concludes the video. Thanks for watching. Please direct any questions to me on Twitter at Sheehy underscore Ryan. I've also included my sources here. Thanks again.